Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Today we continue with the first principle of understanding the created the decreated universe. And yesterday I told you about how this universe is created by Allah Subhanahu taala. That every living thing, even our genetic code, is programmed by Allah Subhanahu taala. And how this universe is created for all of us to live in this world. When we look at all the phenomena of nature, everything that exists in this world is either created things or contingent things or accident or they are essential or necessary only god is essential only god is necessary so if we look from the perspective of all that we touch feel and know we can see these are all created things they are contingent being and this was a science of elmo kalam that our great scholars more than 1000 years ago starting with imam abu hanifa and later on elucidated in very in great depth by imam ashari and imam mutridi of this idea of believing in God as a logical consequence of existence in our life on this earth. That means imprinted in us, we can logically deduct that we can realize God through our reasoning. And this was the Elmu Kalam that was taught to every child. For example, when I was young, I studied with my Ustaz and we teach them about the Sifat Dua Puluh uh, in the Malay Peninsula, the Nusantara, we all thought Sifat the Puluh, Wuju, Idam, Baka, and so on, and each and every one of it, of this Sifat, how it is related to Allah. And this is the idea of logic and syllogism in which we can understand and strengthen our faith through realization that we have to believe in Allah. And this was described in many, many uh, writings and uh, scholarly studies since 800, 1,008 or 1,000 to 800 years ago and this was the proof of the existence of God that was taught to every Muslim child who practices Islam and my late teacher Maulavi Babu Sahib he is an expert in the al Kalam in fact he has written the book called The Tenants of Islam uh, taking the writings of the ancient scholar and elucidating in the most modern manner uh, what is important? But I'm taking from one of his book that is the logic of the existence of God. His book is No Islam, and he used this logic of El Mukallam, very basic for us to understand that believing in God is a necessity. It is the truth. It is not illogical. It's not unscientific, and it is the best way for us to realize that Allah is our Creator and. He created us and He is the essential creator. For example, if we talk about the logic of the existence of Allah, that means he's, He must wujud. The basic proof, logic proof of the essential attributes of Allah is to prove the essentiality of the existence of God. The claim, for example, using uh, logic, Allah is the essential being, His existence is essential. The proof, because Allah is the one whom the universe essentially needs, there's a minor proof, and all those whom the universe essentially needs are essential being. That is a major proof. Therefore, Allah is the essential being. Conclusion of this logic. Minor premise, this universe is an accident. That means this universe has an existence. It has a time and place where it, 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 it was not existent, then it was put into existence. Alright, so it is an accident or a contingent thing. All contingent or accidents essentially need an initiator. So, somebody has to initiate the existence of this universe. Therefore, the universe essentially needs an initiator. So, the major premise proof, if they are not essential beings, then they must be accidents. That means if somebody so-called created the universe, but they are also uh, minor or contingent beings, then they cannot be the creator. And all accidents need an initiator. So, it is one initiator after another. Therefore, they need an initiator conclusion. This initiator needs another initiator, needs another initiator, and, and there's no end to it. So, in the science of logic, the result will be a tasalsun, an unending chain, which is illogical. For example, we see A created B, then B created C, and C created A. So it is impossible. A created B. And B needs an initiator, alright? So C created B and so on. So this chain is illogical and in the science of logic, it is 
an impossible proposition. That means nothing can exist. If this is the reality, then nothing can exist in your Kalam. But because this universe exists, this Adar or the rotation is an illogical premise which cannot be proven uh, and it is a false premise. So that's why in terms of logic, secularism, we see this as the rotating. Or if we have for example, like you see this, therefore the statement that led to they are they need initiated conclusion is absurd. And again, statement that led to this statement, they are not essential being is also absurd. So when absurdity of the statement, they are not essential being established, the opposite statement, they are essential being is established. That means Allah is not being created by like a circle or A created B, B created C, C created A, going round and round and round. It could be a many, many, but Allah is alone, eternal, absolute. Is not uh, being created by a creator and by a creator and creator because there's no end to it. If that is the case, the universe would not have existed. Okay? So it's also the other proof from logic is that if there are two points, that means if there are two points, there are two points, one is longer than the other. Alright? For example, this point is maybe from the first, first world war. And this one is now. So there is a difference here. Alright? Is these two points, if one exists before the other, then one is initiated. So this one cannot be equal to this because the two points existed separately. So again, this is an impossible situation in which if the two lines together and every one of them two lines have limitation, this is against the purpose of the argument. If the two lines do not end, then all of them they necessitate two unequal things being equal. This is absurd. If the first line ends without the second line, then the first one has limitation. Therefore, the second one too has limitation because longer, no longer, uh, is, is because longer than the first one. So because of this, any measure of anything about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it is a rotation or a continuous system, can only exist with Allah being wujud. That means Allah is outside this system. The existence of Allah is not dependent on the rotation or dependent on the existence of anything before him or beyond. That's why his wujud, his kidam, his baka. And each and every one of these is explained in al Kalam in great detail. I'm just giving you a short summary from this book, Post Islamic Psychology, to give you an idea of the taste of the beauty of Ilmu Kalam that inshallah we should revive, teach our children, then they have surety of believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is beyond space, beyond time, beyond the rotation, beyond the two straight lines. He is absolute, everlasting, living creator who put all us into being. So inshallah, with some idea, you can understand the beauty and take up Ilmu Kalam as one of the challenges for us to strengthen our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Apart from us learning later about quantum physics or the genetic code and many other new scientific form, uh, phenomena that we are now exploring and bring us closer and closer and closer towards the realization that all this can only come into being by Allah who created everything. That's why Allah tells us, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard wa khtilafin layli wal nahar la ayatin min al-ta'ala So be people of ulil al-ba, be people who are contemplating, thinking and know that believing in Allah is the best route to success and achievement in this world and hereafter. If you do not have Allah, you are nothing. If we do not have Allah as our Lord, our life is meaningless and boring. But it is because Allah created us and gave us this wonderful position to realize His grandeur and glory. Our role is to realize the grandeur and glory and to worship and acknowledge and submit and surrender to Him. And inshallah, when we do that, we receive His nur, His light. Because Allah brings us closer to Him and we see the beauty of life the beauty of existence, the beauty of all the creatures that he has created, and the joy, the peace, the happiness that come with it. Whatever that we face in this world, remember, when Allah is with you, 
you will be successful. Inshallah, see you in the next episode.